Explosive and unpredictable, 2018 was the inaugural season of the World Enduro Super Series. Eight races in eight countries that brought together tens of thousands of pros, amateurs, and fans, raising the bar for international enduro competitions. The first half of the season was dominated by the hard enduro pros like Johnny Walker. While speed demons like Joseph Garcia and Nathan Watson came on strong in later races, gaining crucial West points. Watson took third overall. Manuel Lettenbickler didn't win a single race all season, but consistent riding got him enough points to play second in the series. 44-year-old legend Graham Jarvis took the Erzberg Rodeo Red Bull Hair Scramble title for the fourth time, but 2018 also witnessed the rise of the Young Guns. We saw amazing athleticism from Red Bull 111 megawatt winner Wade Young. And from 21-year-old Brit Billy Bolt, who rode with heart all season, becoming the first ever Ultimate Enduro Champion. Meanwhile, Johnny Walker and Alfredo Gomez are back in the saddle after 2018 injuries. With three brand new races in the series, 2019 could have very different results. Enduro Super Series. And the city of Porto, Portugal, home to one of the most unbelievable prologues in the series. There's an equally challenging Enduro Cross, and one of the toughest of all hard Enduros. Your favorite Moto Masters are back and hungry for the title of Ultimate Enduro Champion. Johnny Walker, Manuel Lettenbickler and Joseph Garcia are all back for KTM. Husqvarna's 2018 West champ Billy Bolt, along with teammates Graham Jarvis and Alfredo Gomez, will give them a run for their money. As will Shurko's Wade Young and Mario Roma. Excitement is in the air as we rush into the first race of the second West season. It all starts in the dark with an arduous enduro cross. It's, you know, it's a multi-lap race. Top 20 makes it to the semis, then uh, top 10 from the semis make it the final, and uh, whoever wins, wins. There are six qualifying heats, two semifinals, and a final. Riders have six minutes plus two laps over the course of the whole race to lock in their fastest time of the night. Manuel Lettenbickler does it in lap one of qualifier one. He finishes in a staggering one minute, 10 seconds. After six qualifying rounds, the highlighted riders will move into the semifinals. 
as a wave of excitement hits the crowd. Ten of the fastest riders hit the track. Johnny Walker takes the lead on the outside, followed by Manny Lettenbickler. They power through the rocks. Spain's Alfredo Gomez, however, has more difficulty here. In the front, Johnny Walker comes in first with his fastest lap of the night, 1 minute 12 seconds. Semi-final two was all about Taddy Blazuziak. He's followed by West champ Billy Bolt, who's putting up a fast time until the Rock Garden once again rears its ugly head. In a surprise no one expected, last year's Ligaris winner won't get a fast enough time to make it into the finals. Taddy Blazuziak will. He crosses the finish first. Deeper into the night, and the fans are fired up for the finals. The fastest 10 riders of the evening take off. Manny Lettenbickler gets the whole shot. He's followed by Joseph Garcia and 111 Taddy Blazuziak. Around a tight turn, Blazuziak makes his move for first. Behind him, Lettenbickler goes down in the rocks. Walker passes him and takes the lead from Taddy. The Polish Nightmare tries to muscle his way back into first. But number 22 is just too fast. And it's KTM's Johnny Walker taking the very first win at round one. The crowd loses it for one of their hard enduro heroes. Yeah, I'm super happy to, to get first. You know, I've been, I haven't really done this sort of riding in a while, so it was nice to, to get back into it. I can definitely tell I'm super tired, but you know, to, to get the win, I'm really happy. It's Johnny Walker in first, Taddy Blazutiak in second, and Manny Lettenbichler in third. All fastest lap times from the night will count towards starting positions at the day three main event. This is the first round of the West Series, got eight rounds. This year, I think there's five maybe hard races and then three faster races, so a little bit different to, to last year. So the West Series, the World Enduro Super Series, is just a, it's a combination of all these different types of enduro. From, you know, hard enduro, classic enduro, cross country racing, all put together to get the, the ultimate enduro champion. When you see the champion, they're a real, true champion and they've, uh, they've conquered everything, really, throughout the season. You collect points for the season each race, so if you get a win, it's a thousand points, and then uh, the points go less and less, obviously. We're thinking about points and everything, but it's all about Portugal this weekend. I'm going to go out and go as far as I can. Welcome to Portugal. Welcome to Extreme Lagares. We've got the Enduro Cross on day one, and then the City Prologue day two, and then the main race on day three. And obviously the uh, Prologue and the Enduro Cross decide your starting position on final day. Saturday we go into the city, into Porto, and we have a we have a test around the city, which is really cool. It's uh, something you never get to do. You can feel the energy because, like, the Portuguese people are so loud on the on the hills and on the, the streets of Porto, you gain energy. Yeah, for sure, it's the best race of the year because riding in the middle of the city and of Porto, there is full of people uh, from Porto and. Yeah, it's cool, great race between the houses. So, you know, you're just jumping down the stairs and people are like watching you through their windows and that it's pretty crazy. The track got better and longer this year, so hopefully, you know, it's not only about the start, you know, but then you can try to get some passes done uh, in the race. On the Sunday main race, it's like a, a three hour lap, but it's basically just track tape the whole way around, so you don't use a GPS. It doesn't look too difficult when you walk it, but uh, the rock's very polished. If it's dry, no problem. But a little bit of rain like it is now, and there's just like zero grip on there. In some of the rivers, they're quite narrow and only one line, so if one guy is crashed, you're, you're stuck behind it. So you want to be, you know, at the front of the pack starting. It's a good combination of the both worlds, you know? You're going super fast, and then you're going mega technical. 
try and stay dry and stay cool and so hopefully we can come out on top at the end of the race. Thousands of enduro lovers crowd the streets and downtown Porto comes alive with excitement for the day two prologue. We are here in the city of Oporto, one of the most beautiful prologues of the season. Uh, it's so amazing, the crowd is so warm with the, all the riders. Amateurs hit the course first to the delight of the fans. <laughs> It's stairway storming, skin breaking mayhem. This year's obstacle ridden track is even longer than in previous years with a brutal downhill and a 700 meter riverside straightaway to the finish. Tension builds as the pros gear up to fight for the fastest times. Leaving in numerical order, number one, Graham Jarvis hits the track first. The rest of the 40 riders leave one at a time every 30 seconds. Polish powerhouse Taddy Blazuziak is putting up a decent time. Manuel Lettenbaker climbs the stairs, making good time behind Taddy. These times combined with the fastest lap times from the Enduro Cross equal the starting order for the main event. Alfredo Gomez punishes the track in four minutes, 38 seconds, the fastest time in the qualifier. Now it's time for the super final where the 10 fastest riders will go all out to show the fans what West Warriors are made of. Gomez takes the whole shot. Behind the Packer bumping rubber. The rest of the riders make their way into the city. Billy Bolt closes in on second position Blazuziak, who gets tied up in a stairwell. He gets help and continues behind first position Alfredo Gomez. Billy Bolt is making up for a poor performance in yesterday's Enduro Cross, charging hard in the downhill. In front of him, Taddy Blazuziak wows spectators in a narrow straightaway. Leading the pack, Gomez won't let up, and he takes the title. Make a... <laughs> A wheelie on the start to pass by the by the tires. I know it's a lot of risk, but I need a well and uh, I lead the race. I do what what I know I have to do, and that's it. He's followed closely by Blazuziak and Bolt. Johnny Walker is closing in on fourth until he takes a swim in the river. I pulled the bike out of the water and uh, obviously it stopped straight away when I went in. I dragged it out and uh, we just put it on its back, let all the water out and it started up and uh, yeah, I managed to ride it over the line. It's Alfredo Gomez in first, Taddy Blue Zuziak in second and Billy Bolt in third. The starting order for the day three main race is set. And now it's time to take a break from the action to find out which riders have got the skills to pay the bills. Okay, we're here, we're rating the riders, we're seeing what each of us thinks of each other. Could be controversial and cause a few arguments later, but we'll see. Johnny's first on my list. Speed, speed's up there. I recall battling with him at megawatts in the sand, he was absolutely hauling and just on the back wheel everywhere, so I'll give him an arm for that. Endurance. I don't know if it is, but we've never seen him get tired, never seen him struggling really, so give him a nine. Aggression. Five. Five for that. I think he can be quite a nice guy. Wrist taking. Well, he crashed last year. And breaking his arm and both his wrists. Nine. Technique. I'd say a nine. Obviously, he used to be a trials rider. He's got the throttle and clutch control down. So, Billy's up next. Right, Billy, speed, he's good. 
a seven. Risk taking it a ten, he just, well, I don't think he's quite there, is he, Billy? Really? Endurance in Romania is a good job and it's a long, long race. I will put a eight. Aggression. Just look how he rides. <laughs> ten. Technique, four. Three or a four for Billy. Technique's quite good, but I don't, don't like to tell him. Yeah. Do me, Grim. Yeah, I've done you. You oh. missed it. Yeah, what yeah. was that? Phenomenal. <laughs> ten out of ten. Ten out of everything. Yeah, you yeah. got a ten all round. Next up, we have Graham Jarvis. Speed. He's more of a slow and steady wins the race kind of guy. I'm going to give him a two for that. <laughs> Endurance for my age. He likes to get it in there that he's getting old, man. Almost like a pre race excuse. I think he's still got a fair bench press in him. It's got to be an eight. Technique. I give him a 10 for that because he just makes it look so effortless and somehow he just gets up everything. I don't know how he does it. So. Risk taking. The old man card does come into play for the risk taking for Green. He's not um, he's not sending it too much these days. So we'll go for a six. What do you think, Max? Where's Graham aggression at? I don't think Graham has aggression. Uh, I'm going to go over an eight. I've seen him lose the plot a few times. Uh, he's not scared of a swear word, I think. I think we're good. We're done. Max, let's see, where you at? Speed? Where you at? Speed 10? It's hot and windy at the start of the final day at Toyota Porto Extreme XL Lagares. Pros anxiously await for the main event to begin. So we're at the, the final main day of XL Lagares, feeling ready and nervous. Um, about to go and collect our bikes and make our way down to the start. And starting off first, so I'm going to try to push and catch the guys up front, ride with them, get the feel for everything, and then go from there. Yeah, feeling good. First race underway. I just want to get going now. Husqvarna's Alfredo Gomez blasts from the gate in first. The rest leave in 15 second intervals. They start on the Enduro Cross track from day one, then speed into the backcountry. Only 11 minutes into the race, Gomez has lost his lead to number 111, Taddy Blazusiak, trailed by number three, Manuel Lettenbickler. Soon after, Blazusiak is struggling to find his rhythm. He drops back again. And again. Lettenbickler takes the lead. Johnny Walker is now in second. But his push to catch Manny is cut short as he crashes. His fall has injured his thumb and knocked him off his game. Riders continue to fly through the course. Mario Roma, number 74, started in ninth position. He's passed Blazusiak and is now riding in sixth. Up front, Manny is extending his lead. An hour and 20 minutes into the race, Lettenbickler is alone in a rocky riverbed, one of the most popular viewing spots for fans. Further ahead, a wooden obstacle is blocking his path. It's not supposed to be there. He has to move it, and it costs him 12 seconds. Three-time Lagares champ Graham Jarvis is now in second and looking to overtake. But a waterfall stands in his way. He slips while crossing it. Teammate Billy Bolt makes the same mistake. Does the 2018 West champion still have a chance to defend his title? No one is safe at one of the hardest of all hard enduros. Yeah, the West Championship, you know, what we definitely learned from last year is uh, collect points every single time you're in the race. Uh, you know, with, you score points all the way to 250th. So it's important to collect 10 points because it can be, you know, that can be crucial at the end of the season, you know? One of my favorite parts of the championship, you know, the, the fact that amateur guys can, you know, turn up at 
at, at a race and you know be part of the same race and be part of the same championship as as those pro guys. I never thought or dream about being one of the guys being able to battle with the top guys. We have eight races, uh, four uh, very extreme races, and then we have uh, three enduro races. So it's a very different championship with uh, all kinds of obstacles. This year we have three new races, uh, two of them are like extreme, one of them is an normal enduro, so it's definitely going to mix the championship up a little bit, you know, we had more extreme last year I felt than the normal enduro, but now I feel like it's a, a split of four and four basically. It's super important to stay healthy. Don't miss any round and you don't have to win like a lot of races, but you have to be there in front. Like last year I was, I never won a race, but I was super close always, like finishing second, third, third, and you collect a lot of points um, throughout all year. The key to win the championship is to uh, be consistent and you could probably win the championship without actually winning a race. Back to the action. At the end of lap one, Manuel Lettenbichler is first to arrive in the pits. Jarvis comes in second, followed closely by Bolt. Young rolls in fourth. His team moved with lightning precision to get him ready. Jarvis is cramping up, though. Got another bar, another bar. Young takes off before Jarvis and Bolt. He's now leapfrogged into second. Mario Roman hits the pits nearly 13 minutes behind Lettenbichler, who's in the lead. But that's all about to change. Get him, Mario. Up ahead, Lettenbichler climbs through the second lap, past a mob of backmarkers. Wade Young is hot on his heels. In third, Jarvis gets caught behind an amateur. Bolt passes. Moments later, Jarvis takes it right back. The silent assassin comes to a fork in the road. He hesitates. Then out of nowhere, number 74, Mario Roman flies by. A battle for third ensues. Roman, Bolt, and Jarvis jockey for position. Roman finally breaks away from the Husqvarna riders. In first, Lettenbichler is struggling. Wade Young is able to pass him and move into first, but it doesn't last long. Mario Roman sees an opportunity to overtake Young. He moves into first and drops the hammer. Nearly four hours into the race, Lettenbichler and Young are fighting for second place. In front, Roman's shocking comeback wows fans as he makes his final push through the Enduro Cross. Into the muddy trench, he steadies himself. After a two year run of bad luck, Mario Roman comes in first at round one of Wes. I'm feeling so happy because I feel like I deserve this win since 2016 and I have two years uh, in a row problems with my bike and I knew this year I was so strong. The second life I start to take like better feeling on my body and then I pass everyone and I arrive with like five minutes gap so very very happy. South African Wade Young enters the Enduro Cross in second. The message from Team Sherco is loud and clear. We are here to win. Team Sherco shows true sportsmanship as both riders help Manuel Lettenbichler cross the finish in third. Yeah, I just uh, got off to a steady start, managed to catch up to Johnny. Up that one river bed, I just 
messed everything up and I use a lot of energy and I had to dig deep to come back. I got a good breath and rhythm going and um, I wasn't trying to rush it. I just got everything done a whole lot quicker than I think they did. Actually, I'm super happy, you know. Um, I was leading in the first lap, had a good race. And I think I, I kept the like the pace from the first lap, but I think Wade and Mario, they were really strong. It's just a good confident boost and a good start into the season. So I got this third place and it's really cool. It's not a hard enduro without some war wounds. A badge of honor at Toyota Porto Extreme XL Ligaris. Here's your podium. It's Sherco teammates Mario Roman in first and Wade Young in second with KTM's Manuel Lettenbickler in third. And this is your overall West ranking after round one. The first thousand points of the season have been claimed. Coming up, we're in France for round two. Find it here on Red Bull TV. I'm Troy Mannering reminding you to keep the rubber side down.